Hi, I'm Richard. And I'm Flynn. And we are Tricky Bricks. And we are contestants on Season 1 of LEGO Masters US. So today we're here to talk about our Clockwork Man model. <laughs> uh, one of the big questions we got about the Clockwork Man from Episode 3 was how did you make the eye tick back and forth and how mm -hmm. did it make that awesome ticking sound? Uh, so we're going to show you how we did that. So I'm going to pass things over to Richard who's going to explain how this was done. So we had um, several motorization elements that were at our disposal. There's a remote for powered up. This down here is a hub that distributes power out to a motor like this. And this is a medium linear motor in there. And, and we should know that this is powered up, not power functions. They are two very different things. Correct. There are new models now, like there's a little Batman car that works with powered up and multiple different Technic vehicles. And it has a lot more control than power functions, but it's a little easier to use than EV3 robotics. It's sort of right in the middle. So the way the clock worked, and it wasn't flexy like this, I'm going to lay it down here, is the body of the half of the face was like a big resonating grenade. It was like a big resonating chamber, like a speaker cabinet. And what I did was I took the eye and I stalled it against the side of the face, which made the tick sound. Right? I'm going to turn it on here. And since they're already paired up, it's going to find its network real fast. And I'm plugged into B here, so I'll take the B side of the remote, and in front of it. tick and talk. So tick is when the side of the eye hits actually pretty hard against the side of the face. And then because it's a servo or, or positionable motor, it reset. And every time it reset, it made the talk sound. And here it's a little quiet. But actually, you remember our face was another box made out of Lego, so it was another resonating chamber for the talk sound. And that's how the eye worked, tick and talk. And the hardest thing was trying to make sure that the eye didn't fly off the axle. So I'll show you one more <laughs> thing about it. I'll take this apart. And you can see, this is the motor right here. And I just used, there's... An axle, uh, is that a three long axle? The little short uh, one. It's a two long axle. Two long axle in there. And then I put a 90 degree angle Technic connector that takes an axle in this end and an axle in this end. So then it's like this, and the eye goes back and forth like this. That's how it worked. So if you're interested in any of the Powered Up stuff that we use, and all of the things that you see on the show were done by Powered Up, you can actually buy these individual pieces at the Lego store. Now you have to ask for them because they keep them behind the counter. They don't have them just out on the shelf. But if you ask, you can buy all these things individually. So there's a remote control, there's this taco motor, servo motor, positional bull motor, whatever you want to call it. There's a uh, smaller motor as well. Right, there's a smaller motor, there's also um, a train motor. Uh, yep. There's also what they call a, a move motor, which is sort of a, a big contraption that already has a bunch of motors in yep. it. Um, and there, I believe there's probably a couple of other things. Well, there's too. a sensor. There's a color oh, and distance right. sensor. There's a color and distance great. sensor. So these are things that you can buy. Just make sure that you ask um, them behind the counter, and they will go in the back and get it for you. And I did want to just say one other thing. This is a certain level of sophistication. I could make a little remote control car, move it all over the place, and when I did the eye for this, I actually had to hit the button every single time. Tick tock. Tick tock every time, which was terrifying because we like we're standing there. The brickmasters are there, like you know, Will is there. They're all looking at our piece, and Richard is back there manually doing the eye. Now, if you had hooked this up to the app uh, via Bluetooth, you could actually program that eye to go back and forth on its own without doing it manually. But unfortunately, we did not have access to using apps on our phones when we were filming. So yep. we kind of had to do it all with the remote. But I think in the end, it actually worked out really well for us. Yep. Um, <laughs> it, was a, it was a great thing, and we were so happy that not only did it look visually interesting, but it also produced a sound, which I think really, in the end, put it over the top. Yep, and then just finally, we had that whole gear train in the middle of the chest. And, and there's lots of ways to find out about how to do uh, gears. There's the unofficial LEGO Technic Builder's Guide by Pavel Sariel. Oh, that's right? a great book. He's great. He's amazing and goes into great detail. And there's another book we like by uh, Yoshihiro Isagawa. 
And that's the Lego Ideas Simple Machines book. We rely on both of those really heavily. Yeah, there's lots of good stuff in there. So if you get a chance to go out and, and look at those, you should definitely check it out. And just the very last thing, check out that app. It's a little simpler than EV3 Robotics, but you can do so much for your pieces, and it doesn't necessarily just have to be a car. It could be a clockwork guy. Exactly. All right. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, so much for watching. We'll be back next week with another breakdown of Episode 4 and talking about how we made our next piece. All right. Thanks so much. Bye. Bye.